I know it's been a minute since my last video and thanks for all the love that's been spread with that and everyone that was sharing it and people that have subscribed. Not that many at the moment, but we're getting there. Um, I'm back now after a long hiatus. I've got more car reviews coming and more special um, one-offs, I guess, coming up. Today, though, I'll be reviewing the 2019 Porsche Macan. Regular spec, not S-spec. So, yeah, it's not very fast, but... So here we go, 2019 Porsche Macan, regular spec, um, two litre four cylinder inline engine, um, produces around 243 horsepower. I'm gonna put the figures up below in case I got those wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. It's not the fastest car in the world, it's not the slowest, but for a Porsche you would expect a bit more. It's a very nice looking car, I mean like this model that I'm in now has white leather interior. The facelift has brought the new PCM system from the Panamera and the Cayenne. Um, to the McCann line, it has Apple CarPlay, has all the features that you would expect from a modern infotainment system in a car. Gloss black interior, I'm not a massive fan of, but it, it, it does look nice, it's just that it gets scratches and fingerprints here and there. So the model I'm in now, it has heated seats, it has active suspension dampening, off-road stuff, which is basic with all McCanns as they are SUVs, has an ionizer, which basically keeps the car smelling nice inside, in layman's terms, um, in sophisticated terms, it ionizes the air, yeah, <laughs> it just stops bad air from getting in the car and keeps you vitalized, allegedly. I mean, I bought Thai food the other day and I had it in the car with me and it smelled like Thai food. But when I turned on the ionizer, I couldn't really smell it anymore, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure if that's just me overthinking it, but yeah. Lane keep assist, it doesn't do anything but make a noise when you veer through the lanes. Pointless feature, don't bother optioning it. So the McCann is available from my friends at Elite 45. I put some prices below. It's a nice car, I mean, it feels great. And you look good driving it. Also, I'm wearing my Supermot top today, as you can see. I'm about to take it out on a drive. I'll take it out on a drive and I'll talk you through all the cool features and things that I've discovered. Um, let's go. So like I said, the engine is very refined. It's very quiet for a um, four cylinder, two litre engine, which I didn't expect. I was expecting a bit more of a rattle, but it actually sounds all right. And I think they've used um, a lot of sound dampening to to tackle that that sound as i was saying before the car isn't fast at all if i send it it doesn't it does it just doesn't move it doesn't and there's a massive turbo lag you don't get peak power until 5500 rpm which is understandable um but it, it just doesn't feel in terms of the engine like a porsche which is is upsetting because i know this engine in here the ea triple a engine it does work and it does work well in like the Golf R, for example, Seat also use it. Use it. Um, I think Skoda may use it as well. Um, Audi here and there. But I mean, the engine can perform. So I don't know why they've underrated it so much. I guess to push people to to opt for the V6 model. I mean, it just doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, it's, it's a good engine, but I know it has the potential to, be, to do better. And I assume a lot of people that get this car, if you're into cars, you're going to be very disappointed. You can always um, remap it though, which is something that I would do if I if I um, went for this engine. Yeah, other than that, I mean, the car, the car is really well refined. It rides amazingly. It rides better than my Panamera. Than, it rides better to me than the Range Rover Evoque, than the Jaguar F-Pace. It just feels a lot nicer to drive. It feels a lot nicer to sit in and it moves a lot better than all of those cars. I mean, after driving this, I don't understand why you would go for a Range Rover Evoque, why would you go for a Range Rover Velar, or why you would go for F-Type. I personally would just go for this. But in terms of fuel efficiency and fuel economy or whatever, it's okay. It's not as good as I would have thought. So if I was opting for a 2 litre, I would expect a lot better um, fuel efficiency around town low 20s on the motorway low 30s which is a bit of a shame um, but that is for emissions and it's for if you want a cheap porsche this is what you go for i guess the model that i would advise you to go for would be the three liter v6 i mean it's only a couple thousand more i think about three or four thousand more um it's gonna hold the value a lot better um in terms of depreciation it's gonna perform better and you're gonna get similar miles per gallon out of it um I, I honestly would go for that model and it sounds a lot nicer as well 
So there's minimal body roll in this car, which is very impressive. And that's even when you're on comfort mode. When you put the dampers onto sports or sport plus mode, there's even less. So if I activate the lane keep assist now, you'll see what I'm talking about. It actually does nothing at all. It just makes a noise and you're like, okay, I thought you were gonna steer me, but no, it literally just makes a noise. And it's, it's for the price of the option, like I would just not bother because it doesn't benefit you in any way. I thought it was gonna steer me in lane, but look, it doesn't steer and it just makes that noise. Like, how is that noise gonna stop me from crossing lanes? I, I just don't understand, but I wouldn't get that option. I would instead probably opt for something a bit cooler. Um, I've looked at the options online. This car base spec is 46,000 pounds, good. But this exact model that I'm in now has 12,000 pounds worth of options that none of them stand out apart from the panoramic roof and the tailpipes, which is a bit is a bit ridiculous, but we all know Porsche and we all know they charge an arm and leg for extras. I mean, you're basically paying for um, the engine and everything else is an option. <laughs> I literally can't. It's just this model is so slow. All right, let me, let me demonstrate to you how slow it is. So this is my foot at about 20% holding speed. This is it when I floor the car. It is such an anti-climax. <laughs> First of all, there's tons of turbo lag. There's no sound and there's nothing. You don't feel anything. You feel a little bit of the torque. You feel a little bit of the torque, but other than that, it's like, okay, like, is that it? I, 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 I hit the kick down on the pedal and I'm just waiting for something to happen. And it just never happens. Um, and it is, it's a shame because this, like I said, this engine in the Golf 5, it works. In this car, it just doesn't because it's been so detuned. And I don't, I can't for the life of me figure out why you would detune a Porsche, an engine to go inside a Porsche. I, I think they should have just left it, the Golf R spec, taken it out of Golf R, put it in here, left it. Everyone can have a fast Porsche. Everyone can enjoy it. Everyone can have a good time, but no. They detuned it and then they said, well, if you want speed, go for the V6S. This car is amazingly smooth. I, I just never, I never thought it would be this smooth. I mean, I don't remember the diesel one that I drove being this smooth in terms of ride comfort, but this just feels amazing. Shout out to the lady that just pulled out in front of me. In terms of size, I can sit behind myself. It flipping hurts. I'm six foot, um, like I said, so you won't want a six footer behind you or a 5'11 for terrible, 5'10 <laughs> even. It's more designed for children and smaller people. Um, the trunk bit. Oh. So, like I was saying before my phone dropped several times, it is a really good car. The end, now I'm joking. <laughs> this car is riding on a 21 inch um, I don't know like spidery spoke wheels. I'm not really a fan. There's some turbo design or turbo 911 um, Style rims you can get for this. I'll probably say option that over this. These don't look that great. They're cool though um, Black uh, I'm not sure about black for this car Personally, I would probably go for a lighter color. Maybe the electric blue which looks really good won't have great resale value though or I would go for um, a white one I would probably I would probably say other features, panoramic roof, as I said, it's tinted, so not too much light comes in. Um, and I think it's very well insulated compared to most panoramic roofs. It doesn't feel cold when you put your hand to it. It has automatic high beam, so if you're driving at night, there's no cars, it'll be a high beam. When the cars are driving towards you, you'll put the beam back to regular low beam. Apple CarPlay, if you have an iPhone, definitely get Apple CarPlay. At first, I used to think, Apple CarPlay is terrible, man. It just doesn't do anything that you want. But now, I've seen the way and I'm happy. I definitely will be opting it in all of my cars from now on. Um, oh, Audi SQ7, a lot faster than this. This car is just, it's just cool. It's not really, it's like it won't blow you away if you're into cars, but it'll blow you away in terms of what it is altogether as as, as a vehicle. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really nice. Build quality is amazing, feels great. 550 litre storage capacity in the, in the trunk. When you fold the seats down, it turns to 1,500 litres of storage capacity, which is massive. It's not the biggest because of the sloped um, roof line, but it does look cool. Um, there's space in the back. As an adult, you have head space, you just don't have much leg space. But this, it feels super comfortable. 
doesn't hurt. I can imagine taking it on long journeys, cruises over bumps. It's just not as fuel efficient as you would want. Um, but it is, it is a great car. It is a great car. There's, I actually have nothing to fault this car. If I was to give it out of 10, if I was to rate the car. So that concludes my review of the Porsche Macan 2.0 2019 model. Um, it's a decent car and I would recommend it if you're not too into performance but you're into Porsche or SUVs, it's definitely leading in its class. Um, and it's, I think it's a decent car. Like, I would get one maybe as, like, a, a sort of runaround, I guess, but for someone who wanted to use this as a daily or to ferry their family around, it's very, it's very capable, and it's um, a very appealing-looking car, and just in general is a nice place to be. It's full of long journeys, short journeys, regardless. So yeah, Porsche Macan 2019, I would recommend it. Check out Elite 45 for your best deals on this car or similar cars. Bye.